What's up everybody, it's your boy Musasha, and welcome to part 6 of Becoming a Black Knight. And now that we've defeated the demon, let's go up ahead and collect these items up here. Now the Pale Tongue is a key item dropped when you kill another player. You're essentially cutting off their tongue, keeping it for yourself. But in this case we pick up a freebie over there. Now that item we're going to use to unlock Leonard's questline, where he gives us a key to obtain the permanent invasion item called the Red Eye Orb. So whenever we go back to Firelink Shrine now, we're going to have that quest line open. Now the red bug pellets, which I picked up on the ground, just give you extra fire resistance for 60 seconds. Really useful against bosses like Demon Prince or any, any monster that does fire damage. Our Glaive makes short work of that doggy. And if you do this little run around, <laughs> you can dodge their attack, which is ridiculous. There was a treasure chest there with that, which had Pale Resin, a 60 second dark buff. But we don't need it for this weapon. We can't apply special buffs on our weapon. I missed the attack. Let's try that again. Backstab. So powerful it killed that fatty. Is she gonna Bible us? There she is. 666. So metal. Now up on that ledge there was a flin ring, which is useful when you're wearing no gear at all. It gives you an extra attack buff for having really low weight. And I mean really low, like less than 10%. I made my way all the way to here just to get this Clorinthy ring, which is one of the best rings in the game, especially for PvP, because it allows your stamina to regen much faster. But as, as you can see, we can't wield it, we're over 70%, so we're going to have to pick up another ring which increases our carrying capacity called Havel's Ring. And in order to do that, we need to progress down this lift, not up like we did before, and go into the next zone. Now up ahead in this open space, we've got a new type of mini-boss enemy. A nice sword wielding kind of knight, but he's very beastly. If you can see, he stands on all fours and he hits like a truck. As you can see, I got frost put in there and it did huge damage to me. So be extremely careful when fighting that guy. And remember, you can also parry his lunging sword attacks. This is the Undead Settlement, and now, welcome to the new area. The Road of Sacrifices. I hear a new type of enemy called a Corvian. Corvians essentially grow angelic looking wi wings, but much more hideous than an angel would be. Now this guy wielding the staff is kind of the leader and whenever he screams they all go super aggro and attack you at the same time so it's good to kill him first. He also drops a staff called the Storyteller Staff that does a special interesting attack, a special type of poison that works on most if not all bosses and it chunks their health quite well. Let's get rid of these guys with an awesome glaive and make short work of Their attack pattern is extremely unpredictable when they've got their wings grown, so watch out for the jump which can't be blocked. It just you have to roll out of the way. Now he screamed there, but we're out of the zone, we don't give a crap. Here we have Henri and her sidekick. That's all he says in the entire game, really. Oh hello. This is are you too we are we seek we make the next so She basically is on the same journey as oh, you, yeah, trying to kill Aldrich and trying to light the fire. She's essentially a little girlfriend. Aldrich is a boss which I'm not gonna get into yet. We'll see when we get there. Mm -hmm. 
that way that I went was a little shortcut. Saves us from going down and fighting a lot of stick wielding annoying hollows. A new type of enemy here, he's kind of like a werewolf. Even transforming into a werewolf, staked stake to a cross because he's got something carrying on his back. We can't backstab him, so we just have to attack him from the front. He does the really annoying backstab slash attack, which is it's pretty cool, but fuck, it's annoying. Hey! Our oh, first Black Knight bro in this area. This is the weakest variant, and this is an another one you can farm. Simply it's got, because it's got more, sorry, less total HP and less attack. Be careful, because if you miss your parry like I did there, you'll get wrecked. And he didn't drop anything. You bastard. That item on the right was the Cellsword Twin Blades. If you like dual wielding weapons, pick those up. And the Farron Coal gives us heavy infusion and I think fire and something else. Now, over here in the forest area, this is the most common area where people PvP in the early game. We've got these giant crab bastards, sort of like mini bosses. When they lift up like that you can literally just press attack and grab them, stab them in their ball sex. Stay out of the way of that water gun otherwise it'll bubble stick on you and slow you down. You can parry these guys but yeah, I have to know which attack. It's just a one-handed slam, this attack. Oh, thanks. Where are you repost? This is his grab attack, so dodge out of the way of that. Water gun. Now here we have an NPC invasion. Even when a player invades you, the message appears the same, just the name is different. So Hazel is uh, one of Rosaria's fingers, Rosaria being a NPC that invaders serve. And Hazel is just one of those invaders. She is a intelligence build, meaning she's a sorcerer and she likes to cast a lot of magic. As we'll see now. There she is. She just buffed up her stick. She went for a running attack and we just parried her perfectly. Now she's gonna try to heal since she's on less than half health and we're gonna interrupt her. Sorry Hazen. We have to kill her two more times for it to become a friendly NPC summon. Here we have the two fatty bros. One wielding a great club which is an amazing PvP weapon. The other wielding the Exile Greatsword. Also a very interesting weapon which is has a high um, strength and dexterity requirement. Let's backstab this bastard for trying to heal. That secondary spin attack is really good for roll catching as you saw there. This attack is our special attack. So after doing a R1 attack, I press L2 and starts that tornado spin and I follow up with a heavy attack to do the final slam. Down the ladder leads us to a new area. Whee. Let's rest up real quick. Welcome to Farron Keep, the poison shithole. Where everything is poison, 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 poison. Lots of disgusting swamp things. Lovely. Now at that sunken tower, there's another Estus Flask uh, shard. Let's go pick that up. Bring, bringing us the nine or ten Estus Flask. I can't remember. See that purple bar at the bottom building up as we cross the swamp. Poison meter builds up. So let's um, let's prepare our poison resist items, which are these purple moss clumps. Now I'll show you guys a little detour leading to some interesting items. Here we have a Dark Wraith. These guys have a really cool moveset, so you can farm this guy, collect his Dark Sword in his set, 
And he might even drop a dark hand, which is awesome. They commonly drop cracked red eye orbs, so if you haven't got the permanent one, you can just fight them, collect collect a few, and then invade some players. Now the Sage's Call is a very <laughs> sneaky item. It allows you to infuse your shields or weapons with Blessed, giving you a passive regen. Sneaky because when you're an invader, you can just run away and wait for your regen to fill up if you've taken a lot of damage. Now these are the Grus, these are the living creatures of this area. This particular Gru doesn't wield weapons because he's a psychopath. He's kind of like a berserker, slashes around with his arms and tries to grab you. He's a pain in the ass. Titanite Shard. That caught me by surprise. Normally he does a slow stab. There we go, he dropped his Rotten Gru dagger, which is just a poison inflicting dagger. Useful if you want to be a pain in the ass invader. Three more enemies and we're up to the next bonfire. I want to show you something. This is a new type of enemy that um, wields a shield. When you attack an enemy blocking with a shield like this, slowly wears down their stamina and eventually the attack will slightly push them back like that meaning the next attack is completely gonna break their toys Let's take care of the medicine man let's kick him off to here this is Sparta <laughs> oh he didn't die damn it doesn't matter that we're poisoned, we can just sit at the bonfire and rest. Cool. Now that doorway up ahead is locked, we need to light all three fires for it to open, unlocking the next boss zone. In the slug infested little room, there's another Estus enhancing item allowing us our Estus to heal us more. Fire bombs are really useful, they're weak to fire, so throw some fire bombs in here to inflict damage. But I can't tell which one's alive and which one's not. Disgusting little ball sacks. This is where a glaive shines, we can just do a running attack, run across that water, and inflict damage at the same time. Not this long ass letter. Tippy tappy tippy tappy tippy tappy tippy tap. We have the next bonfire, but first let's let's explore around this corridor and see what we have here. Another one of those little crystal lizard bastard boys. Thanks for the twinkling type line. And here a secret wall. Now the dream chasers ashes when we sell them to the maiden allow us to buy um, titanite shards infinitely for 800 souls. Here we have kind of like the, the god of this area that everyone worships, this dead wolf. He gives us an awesome gesture for use for PvP dueling, as well as allowing us to join his covenant. Now this covenant is if you want to invade in that forest area where those giant crabs were. And for us it's perfect. At this level, 20 to 30. Ideally with a plus 2 or plus 3 weapon. Now up here we have the Asylum Demon, which is the first boss in Dark Souls 1. And this is the guy that, once we kill him, we can transpose his soul and get the Havel's Ring, allowing us to carry more stuff, equip our Clorinthy Ring, and any other ring that we might want to equip in our fourth slot. The trick here is to attack one of his legs, eventually breaking them off, and then he falls down. When he's down on the ground, you can just approach his head, do a massive repost. Unfortunately for us, our weapon's too strong against him, it's designed to fight him, so we probably kill him before he can even break his like tail whip. Yep. Oh 
We've got a soul, now we can make the ring. Thank you, Asylum Demon. And thanks for watching part 6, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you on the next video. See you later.